Okay, continuing with uh, Unit 2, Lesson 7, we're going to work on Problem 7.2 now. Uh, and here we have May, and she graphs the function P, given by P of X is equal to the quantity X plus 1 times the quantity X minus 2 times the quantity X plus 15, and she sees this graph. She says, this graph looks like a parabola, so it must be quadratic. Uh, part one here, uh, is May correct and use graphing technology to check? Uh, so I would say if we, uh, pull up our graphing calculator and here's our function entered in just as it's written, uh, here we go, just as it's written, uh, and then we hit graph. Uh, it appears as though May is correct, but we have to be very careful. Um, so it appears as though May is correct, but I would say not quite so fast. Uh, what I want you to notice here is notice that there are one, two, three factors involved in this function. Therefore, I would expect to see three zeros or three x-intercepts. So is May correct? I would say no. Uh, there should be three X intercepts. Okay, going down to part two here. Explain how we could set a uh, select a viewing window before graphing an expression like this that would show the main features of the graph. And as a matter of fact, what we're really interested in here in this lesson is we want to know where are my x-intercepts and where is my y-intercept. Uh, so we have to think of that uh, when we look at this function at the very top. If we want to find these x-intercepts, remember, that's simple to do simply by taking each one of these factors, set it equal to zero, and solve. So we'll take the first factor, x plus 1, set it equal to zero, and solve. And we get an x value of negative 1. So I should see an x-intercept at the point negative 1, 0. Then we'll take the second factor, which is uh, x minus 2, set it equal to 0 and solve. And I get x is equal to positive 2, so I should see an x-intercept at the point 2 comma 0. And lastly, we have... Uh, a factor x uh, plus 15, set that equal to 0, solve, and I get an x value equal to uh, negative 15. So then I should expect to see an x-intercept of negative 15 zero. Okay, now in addition to that, uh, remember we can find the y-intercept by taking all three constant values, positive one, negative two, and 15, and multiplying those to find the y-intercept. Let's multiply each one of those positive 1, uh, negative 2, and positive 15. And when we multiply that, we get a value of negative 30. So then I know that my y-intercept should be the point 0, comma, negative 30. Okay, so using this information, we can kind of come up with a pretty good uh, graphing window. So we know that we want to see uh, 
negative 15 is the smallest x value. And we see that uh, positive 2 is the largest x value. In addition to that, for the y values, I know that I see negative 30. And I'm going to go ahead and say it's probably, if it goes down 30, why not choose a y value that's up 30 as well. Now, these will give us, uh, if I use this window setting, this will give us uh, the exact points, but that's not really what I want. So what I want to do is I want to make my window a little bit bigger than both of these. So I want to go a little bit further than negative 15. Let's call it negative 20. I want to go a little bit bigger than positive 2. Let's call it, I don't know, positive 5. I want to go a little bit smaller than negative 30. Let's call it negative 40. A little bit larger than positive 30. Let's call it positive 40. And let's see if we use this window if our graph looks any better. So on my x-axis, I want to go from negative 20 to positive 5. And I do that by going to the window. My minimum x value, I said I want to go from negative 20. My maximum x value, I said I wanted to go to positive 5. My minimum y value, I said negative 40. And then my positive y value, I said a little bit bigger to positive 40. Now let's see what happens when we hit graph. And when we do that, notice that I see all three of my x-intercepts. On to part three of our question here. Uh, in part three, we want to uh, use our explanation. What viewing window would we choose for graphing uh, this function? Well, remember what we did is we looked for our intercepts. Uh, this first intercept again is going to give me an x value of negative 1. This next one is going to give me an x value of positive 1. This next one is going to give me an x value of positive 2. And this fourth one is going to give me an x value of 28. So just looking at this, I can get a good idea of what my x window should look like. Uh, the smallest value is negative 1. We might want to go a little bit smaller than that, so negative 5. My largest x value is positive 28. We might want to go a little bit larger than that. Uh, so we will call that, uh, I don't know, let's go to 35. Now, remember uh, our y-intercept. To find the y-intercept, we just take each one of these constant values. Find the y-intercept. We're going to take each one of these constant values and multiply them. So positive 1 times negative 1 times negative 2 times negative 28. And remember, these numbers are coming from here, positive 1, negative 1 negative 2, negative 28. And when we multiply that out, positive 1 uh, times negative 1 times negative 2 times negative 28, uh, we get uh, 56, uh, negative 56. For my uh, y-intercept. I just want to make sure that that is correct. Yep, I get uh, negative 56. Uh, so I want to go a little bit lower than that. So let's call it 
negative 65 uh, less than or equal to my y value less than or equal to and if I went down 65 why not just go up 65 so this is kind of uh, what my window would look like these would be my x minimum and maximum values for the window and this would be the y minimum and maximum values for my window